All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Takes from the Lakes podcast. I'm James. I'm not joined by Nash today. Nash is off doing some sort of camp at Duke. I'm really not entirely sure. Um, that dude is out of town like every 10 seconds. He was just in New York for this journalism camp. Now he's in Duke for this, but he'll be back Friday and hopefully we'll be uh, getting some episodes out for sure. But yeah, today it's just me. I just kind of want to get a little kind of mini pod up. I'm not really not sure how long this is going to be, but um, it's really sort of based about one topic in one sport, and that is baseball. I uh, really don't get to talk enough about baseball. Um, I obviously am a diehard Red Sox fan. Nash is a Royals fan, so it's kind of hard for him to pay attention because the Royals suck. Um, and even for me, sometimes I kind of lose track because the Sox will suck, but I try to keep, uh, keep in touch for sure. But yeah, I mean... In today's MLB, there are a lot of teams that are just fun to watch. I mean, you got young teams like the Orioles, the Diamondbacks, the Reds. You know, you got older teams, Dodgers, um, Astros are still pretty fun to watch, Rangers. But this is really going to be about one specific team, and that is the Cincinnati Reds and why you should be watching the Reds. And not only should you be watching the Reds, but you should also be rooting for them very heavily. And so I kind of have a certain, uh, I have a couple different points to bring up about the Reds and why they are fun to watch. Um, Obviously, we know all about Ellie De La Cruz. I mean, I could go on for hours about that dude. If you've paid relative attention to them, will be you have seen him steal second, third, and home, hit for the cycle, and like a whatever, seven uh, run comeback win. He's just an extremely fun dude to watch. Um. I'm not entirely sure if he'll win rookie of the year. I think he might have came up too late. But, I mean, that's sort of the kind of – he's kind of rejuvenated that clubhouse, and it's showed on the field for sure. I mean, I am not entirely sure what the record is when he's playing. I'm going to double-check that right now. Yeah, so the record when Ellie is playing is 22-8. and That's quite absurd. I mean, they're 50-41 and right now, so what is that? They were – 28 and 33 when he came in now they're 50 and 41 in first place in the NL Central I mean he's just alone I don't know if I've seen a dude come up like that and just immediately just turn a club around um pull up his stats real quick I mean he's just done everything he's hit homers he's been blazing around the bases he has let's see 16 stolen bases four home runs 16 RBIs um 325 batting average and only 30 games like seriously He is the centerpiece for why you should be watching this Reds team. And there's also, like, I feel like he kind of overshadows the other guys. I mean, they have a ton of rookies that that have seriously played really well this year. Just to name a few. I mean, uh, Matt McClain, Spencer Tier, um, Will Benson, and TJ Friedel. I mean, just a ton of guys who have really stepped up. And Matt Matt McClain came out of nowhere in the first, whatever, 10 games. He'd batting like 380 or something like that. So, um it's really been cool to see sort of these dudes step up like Matt, like I said, Matt McLean, 300 batting average, seven hard months, 29 RBIs. Um, Spencer, T- Spencer steer. I, I think he's really in the lead for, I guess Corbin Carroll is, but he's right up there for uh NL rookie of the year, 14 home runs, 51 RBI, uh, batting 277 with 90 hits, like seriously in 88 games only too. like, They've just had a ton of ton of guys that have come up and played really well. And it's sort of been cool to see, you know, I mean, Steer's 25, McLean's 23, Ellie's 21, um, Benson's 25. I don't like, I don't know as long as I've been watching baseball, I don't know if there's been a team that has had this many young guys and this many rookies who have stepped up and really played that well. It's just super awesome to see. Um, so I think as far as our lineup goes, they'll be fine. I mean, Ellie will do his thing. The rookies will do his thing. I haven't even mentioned Joey Votto. That's another cool thing. I think Joey Votto being with that squad in the clubhouse as well, sort of being like that, I mean, not to just disrespect him, but old guy who can kind of, you know, give them, you know, wisdom and uh, sort of, you know, be that guy they can go and talk to and stuff like that. But and another thing that's cool about him is that he also knows his role. He knows that it's, you know, it's not, he's not the best player on the team. He knows that it's Ellie's team and that it's, Matt McLean, Steer, they're coming up, but he sort of accepted his role in that, yep, I'm going to be here. I'm not going to be the best player, but I'm going to be here for these young guys and um, do my best to, to help this team be the most successful. So as far as the lineup goes, I, like really incredible. Um, Pitching-wise, 
starting pitching, um, not the greatest. I mean, Andrew Abbott's been really awesome. Um, pull, this, pull up his stats right here. 238 ERA and 41 innings of work. Not a huge sample size, only seven starts. But, I mean, he's been really awesome. Uh, Hunter Green has been on the has been on the IL. Graham Ashcraft has been a promising rookie. But he's kind of having a rough year. So as far as their starting pitching goes, I'm not entirely sure what they'll do with that the rest of the season. Who knows? Maybe they'll trade for a guy here and there. That's sort of another thing. Um, what if they'll be buyers or sellers? Because they are in first place. They most likely it's either them or the Brewers who are going to win the NL Central. If they really think that they can make a run in the playoffs, they might trade for a dude and trade a couple of their prospects, but. Then again, I'm not really uh, entirely sure. But, um, yeah, so that, as far as our starting pitching goes, not the greatest, but they still have some guys that can do it. Um, but their bullpen, that is the strength of the team. The bullpen, Alexis Diaz, I mean, 40 uh, innings pitched, 203 ERA. That dude is seriously 26 saves. That guy is the truth. Um, and they just have a bunch of guys, Lucas Sims, Alex Young, uh, Buck Farmer, who really just come out and put up a really a lot of innings and came in, came in in a lot of games and have locked it down. And so that's think I think that's really a huge deal for if a team wants to make a run uh, late in the season and in the postseason is if they have a good bullpen. I mean, I've seen it with the Red Sox; they've have not had a good bullpen in years, and they really have not done much. Um, I mean, I guess they made the ALCS, but then again, there they didn't do much with that as far as pitching wise. Um, so I think that will really help them. I think their only problem as far as their whole team is starting pitching, but we'll really just see how that goes. So like I said, the Reds are just one team of many um, in MLB that are extremely exciting and have just outperformed expectations like crazy that I think if you want to get into baseball, want to start watching stuff in the back half of the season and you're looking for a team to root for, I think the Reds are seriously so fun to watch they're so easy to root for just got kind of like an underdog mentality got a bunch of young guys but they still have Vado who's been there and he's a hall of famer um and just you know last year i mean they were horrible start off three and 22 i'm not sure if i've said that but yeah start off three and 22 um nobody was going to their games Every, the fans are mad their franchise was in a rough spot but here they are they have guys ellie matt mcclain steer who kind of you know, inserted new life in the franchise. And I just think that's really cool. Um, and you can go and watch any of their home games and just the crowd is electric and it's super awesome to watch. And Ellie is doing something one night that nobody's ever done before. And um, so I will try, I'm going to try and watch them as long with the Red Sox, of course. So I'm going to try and watch them a lot the rest of the year. Um, but yeah, definitely keep a close eye on the Reds the rest of the season. And so that's all I've really got. I'm um, not sure how long that was maybe like nine ten minutes uh sort of a quick little tidbit um about the reds and about their future and about how they might do the rest of the season uh then again we'll see if they're buyers or sellers or if they'll kind of hold that neutral role um because they are still in the process of rebuilding but they can be good very similar to the orioles i'm interested to see what they'll do as well um but yeah so that's kind of i wanted to give you guys a quick little monologue uh, for them and why they're so special and um yeah i'll uh, catch you guys next time see ya